Just saying, what do you guys do if you had the power to move the EU closer to a federation? I would go for it. I think it would be good for the EU to not just be the, uh, an economic uh, union, but a military and diplomatic and everything union, uh, just like the just like the United States, right? What do you think? It would be if if each EU country uh, ends up being like a state in the United States that would be a powerhouse that could you know take some weight off the shoulder of the united states so that the world liberal order is not being held by just one goddamn superpower at some point i know if the entirety of the eu is still not going to be a match for the united states but at least we're going to get there a little bit closer it's and also i think eu has a much better um dedication to human rights and uh, then United States does again. Their record is not uh, not clean as well, but it would be better if we had two world police instead of one, so that they could challenge each other for who's the better human rights activist. Like so, for one to be embarrassed by the other one when they one of them falls short. Um, it's just like it's easier for the U.S. to just on, only talk about human rights and not uh, commit to it when it's the only, when, when it's the main power that is withholding, uh, uh, that is maintaining the world liberal order, right? We want the reliance on um, the reliance on the maintaining of the world liberal order to be on the shoulder of more powers, so that there's some competition in the propaganda or the say you know uh, so, you know so that they could there's an alternative. Right now we have like you know. I don't want the alternatives to be China and Russia. I want the alternatives to be the EU. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, and also less burden on the American taxpayer. Yeah, but Idris's question is, okay, if you had the power to, what would you do to move the EU closer in that direction? Yeah, I would. I would. I would. I would definitely. No, no, that. no. What would you do? Not oh, would what you would you do? It? What would you do? If you, if you had the power to, what would you do? No, I think he said... I think his question is, would you do it? Well, what no, would the, I do? What What would you do? How would I do it? Um, I don't know. On, I'm, I support it. I don't know what you would do to move towards it. I mean, I need to know more about the bureaucracy of how the EU works to be able to answer that question. Like, I need to know like what levers need, I need to pull, who need to I talk to, whose back I need to scratch, <laughs> who, mm -hmm. whose, whose pockets do I need to fill. Like, I don't know how the EU bureaucracy works, but... I just know that there's a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how about this? I will reduce the bureaucracy. Maybe, maybe make things a little bit more straightforward. Um, mm -hmm. There's too many... Actually, maybe I don't know, because, yeah, um, one thing that people complain about EU is the too much regulations and laws, but also those standards are what sets them apart from actually having higher standards than other other, other uh, international bodies, right? So I don't know. I would have to know. I have to. I don't have the expertise to know what, what, what needs to be done. I just think EU moving towards that direction would be a, a better thing both for EU people and also the world. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. What if people said that this is moving towards a multipolar world, which you are, you have concerns about multipolarism? Wait, I was distracted by this question. Read, read this question. <laughs> and Mikhail is asking, bro, where did you find such an attractive co-host? Well, thank you. I'm a guy on. Yeah. <laughs> um, long story short, he de-radicalized from, me from Antifa, and I came to talk to him about it. And we've been friends ever since. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So, what were you saying about multipolarized? What something? Sorry. So you have talked many times about your concerns over a multipolar world. Um, usually, this discussion takes the form of talking about multipolar world being China versus us russia versus us etc cetera, etc cetera. but what if people are saying that you're talking about oh we want two world police what if what if they say and they come back to you and say this sounds like the multipolarism that you are fearful of okay i want i, I was saying i was fearful of people that so, at least somewhat care about human rights being challenged by 
pure evil. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, I would multi. I'm okay with a multipolar world. Is like no, we care about human rights. No, we care about human rights, and there's actually some genuine effort. Okay, not like Chinese level of effort, like that China CCP. Not, not let's say CCP, not Chinese. Okay, not CCP level of effort. Like as much as I agree, the United States is responsible for a lot of human rights violations. Okay, it is on adhering to some human rights. Okay, of standards. It's somewhere on their list. Again, it's not their number one priority. It's not their number two priority. It's like maybe number, I don't know, 26 or something, but it's on there. Okay. Like they are, there is, there is, they are moving in, the, like there is an attempt to move, somewhat move in that direction. Okay. Um, the EU is even higher than the than the united states i think okay with that their dedication i mean again you could find examples of places where that's not true but let it relative to the united states i think they have even a better record sometimes um and i just think like if these are the powers that be challenging each other or how the world order has to be that would be a better world if we, on one side we have the united states and then on the other side, we have China. That's the kind of multipolar world that I would not. Like if you are a poor country that needs debt and you go to United States and United States like, sorry, if you want this money, you have to clean up your human rights record. And you're like, damn it. And they like do it. Like this is actual stuff that happens. Okay. Like this has caused some stability, for example, for a long time in Africa coups had dropped because of the political stability that was required in Africa for for them to get money from EU or United States, right? But then when like one of the many factors that increased instability in Africa was the reason why China came and like, we don't care about this stuff, right? And you can get money from us anyway, right? And we're like, okay, so these standards that Europe and United States require, I don't need that. I could get, I, and that has one of the major factors other than drought and political Islamism that has caused a lot of instability in Africa, right? So the coups are now picking up, uh, starting to increase again, right? Um, but, um, but you've also said that China yeah. getting involved with this is a good thing because it provides competition. Yeah, yeah. I need. I want competition. I want United States main competition to be EU, not China. And that's a friendlier competition as well. I mean, mm -hmm. again, I want China to, uh, okay, unless I, I still want China's economy to grow and it become a major player, okay? I'm talking about, but I don't want the CCP to be as, as the way it is right now to be, have that much influence over. I mean, it's so so weird as well because CCP is the major, the main challenger right now uh, into, in, in the world liberal order, even though it's the number one beneficiary of it as well. Like it, it, it's so like, it's, it's the, the, the beast that is China right now, it, it has happened because of the level of stability and security that United States has provided with its military around the world. Like the main beneficiary of that stability mm -hmm. the United States military has created has been China, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So people, mm -hmm. So to see this like, as the United States versus China sometimes doesn't make any sense. Like it seemed like, you know, the CCP is just like biting the hand that it feeds it, right? You know what I mean? Like this whole wolf, a wolf warrior diplomacy is just like you're not working for China, you know? You're just working for CCP. It does, none of this make any sense. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it's very interesting. It's it's the it's very opportunistic. I mean, it makes sense though. I mean, I'm saying it doesn't yeah, make no, sense. It doesn't make it does make it its own kind okay, of logic. It, yeah, yeah, it doesn't make any sense if you assume that CCP is working for the Chinese people. But it makes absolute sense if you think about them trying to just maintain power and stay and stay in control. Yeah. Hey guys, if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy Cali, you know like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below.
because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.